friends, it's Amy. Welcome to Doki Doki Forest. I'm so glad you are here. Now, over here at Doki Doki Forest, we like to do some illustration, we like to do some painting and drawing, we like to do some creating. Sometimes we work with clay, although I haven't done that lately, but stay tuned. I will. And we also love to share some books and all kinds of interesting things that we might find when we're out and about. Now today is Thursday, which means it's time for hashtag Thrifty Thursday. This is an open collab started by Sherry over at Turquoise Dreaming, and anyone can jump in, use the hashtag, tag Sherry so she can find you, and share whatever goodies you've been finding when you're out and about. Now, these may be things you plan on using in your art or your journaling. These may be things that inspire you, or they may just be fun things. <laughs> Maybe just a decoration for the house. I like seeing everything. I love seeing what people find at their local antique stores or thrift shops, yard sales, charity shops, op shops. It's all wonderful. So today, I'm going to share with you one functional item that I found, and it does have to do with journaling. And then I'm going to share with you a bunch of like magical and fairy and gnome books that I found. And the reason why is because these sort of books are just the sort of thing I love to sit down and flip through and it really fuels the imagination. So it really helps me create when I'm kind of feeding my brain these wonderful stories and images. And that can be through books, that can be an amazing movie that you watch or a TV series you watch, that can be other creators on YouTube, that can be a walk in the woods. You know, we get inspiration from everywhere. So these books I'm going to share with you, I'm sharing because they absolutely inspire me and make me want to get out my supplies and start drawing and creating. And I want to recommend them or at least show them to you. I haven't actually read these. I've flipped through them. So we're going to look at them together and maybe they'll inspire you as well. So let's get right into it. All right. So First up, I'm going to share with you an item I found that I thought was really interesting. Now it looks like an old-fashioned iron. Oh, getting something on my, my fingers from my art supplies. <laughs> it looks like an iron, but what it actually is, is a little pencil sharpener. So let's try it. I have one of my handy dandy drawing pencils here and it's looking, you know, pretty dull on the end there. We got to sharpen that up. So let's try this. So I just thought this was really cute. I really love like miniature sort of items. All right. So we have sort of a point on there. Let's see if we can get it a little bit more and then I'll show you if I can remember how it opens. All right, so that seems to be the kind of point we can get from it right now, which is great. It's a lot better than it was. And then you slide, there's a little metal piece right here that you slide out like that. And then it's hinged so that you can open it and inside it holds the pencil shavings. So now I'll go ahead and clean that out. And, but isn't that just so cute? I love that. And this little piece, I actually don't know why there's this piece here. I feel like maybe this was a sharpener too or something. Not 100% sure. But yeah, so that's my little functional item to sharpen my drawing pencils. I can keep it right here on my desk and I just feel like it is really cool. I've never seen this before. So that was a very unique item. That was from an antique store, actually, but it wasn't much. It was only a few dollars, so that was worth the investment. Okay, now it's book time, and we're going to begin with this adorable book that I found called The Gnome's Almanac. And I knew just by that cover I had to have it. And I did pay, I think it was $10 for this, which seems like kind of a lot because it's just a small book, 
but it's one of those things where I didn't know if I would ever see it again, so I picked it up. And I'm going to share with you. It says, for the enjoyment of Bill and his children. Easter, I believe that says 1970 there. But let's see when this book... Oh, and the Gnome's Almanac is illustrated by Ida Bohada Morpugo. Copyright 1942. Printed in the USA. And the thing I really loved about it was, of course, these illustrations. These watercolor illustrations are beautiful. But I also loved that there's a little story here, or a little poem, I should say, for each month. So I thought that today I will share with you the poem for November, since it's the last day, the last day of November. And then next time I see you, for my next Thrifty Thursday, we will be in December. So then I'll share with you the December poem at that time. Look at that cute little mole. Here's my birthday month, April. Woohoo, I get a frog. Love frogs. But yeah, just love these gnomes. Happy little gnomes. Dancing around with the bugs. Oh, the mayflies. That makes sense, mayflies. Very cute. So yes, we will be enjoying this throughout the year. I will share with you the poems in here. But these illustrations, they're just so inspiring. August, September, and October. And finally, let's get into November. It's a charming sight to see, Mrs. Squirrel in her tree, storing nuts for winter food, always in a happy mood. Some are big and some are small. Carefully, she counts them all. Though mark my words, she is not greedy. She always helps the poor and needy. I love that little red squirrel. So cute, and look, she's donating one of her acorns to the gnome. You gotta help each other out in the forest. Sometimes it's hard to find food. Very cute. So yeah, the gnome's almanac. Love this. This may be my favorite of all the books I'm going to show you today. I probably should have saved it for last. <laughs> but I was very excited to, to show you this. And although I like all the books I'm going to show... Well, there's one I'm actually not sure I like. I'll show you that one next. But... This one I just like because of the age of it and the illustrations, just beautiful. Now this book, I'm not even 100% sure that I love. This is Scary Fairies. So this book has a holographic cover. Look at that. I just thought this book was very different. I hadn't seen it before, but I don't know if I like it. I like these fairies over here on the side, though. Like, hold on, let me try to cover up where that shine is a little bit. Like, I like these fairies are very beautiful and cute. And this one down here is a little bit naughty, but still cute. But then there's some, you know, scary fairies in here. It's in really good condition, though. This book is, it feels like barely anyone's ever cracked it open. Let's see, there's some fairies there. They're looking quite mischievous and not not the uh, most attractive fairies I've ever seen, let's say. But I can appreciate the illustration and the expressions. Scary Fairies was written by Dugald Steer, illustrated by Patricia Ludlow. Oh, this was printed in Brookfield, Connecticut. And the pages are really thick. So here I'll read you uh, I'll read you the beginning here. At the farthest end of the garden path at night when the moon is out, or just outside of the garden gate, there's something strange about. 
It's there that the scary fairies hide. They don't know how to be good. And how they laugh such wicked laughs when children get lost in the wood. So look, these kids are playing soccer up here. Or football, depending on, you know, where you're from. And then this little girl, she's about to wander into the woods. But watch out, because down here we have somebody in this bush. Something that looks kind of hideous is in that bush. It looks like a weird baby. <laughs> Let's turn the page and see what we have. Oh my gosh. Look at these things. All right, so we have the illustration which goes across the page of these weird baby imp fairies. And then we have the holographic picture. Ooh. Here, I'll read you this too. The gooseberry bush by the garden fence is a place you should never go. For down by the roots of the greenest shoots, the fairy babies grow. Now fairy babies are rather fierce, for up your legs they'll climb, and pull on your hair and nose and your ears a hundred or more at a time. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a very different book. You know, I don't know if it's the kind of thing you like or not, but I, it was just kind of so different. I just had to have it. We have the illustrations here. Watch out, here comes another one. Which hideous fairy do we have? This scary fairy. Can you see her? Sitting on that mushroom. I don't even know if Evelyn Rose can look at this. My fairy. This might be, this might, oh, no, she's telling me it's not too scary for her. She's saying she's seen it all. These sort of things don't phase her. <laughs> look at this. Look at these naughty ones. They fiercely guard their woodland homes. They've got a magic trick that makes you jump and bounce about and dance until you're sick. These are some fresh fairies. Ooh, look at this. Honey is sweet. So lovely to eat, but if you should find a hive, don't leave it too late. Just make an escape if you want to get home by five. Oh, look, this nice holograph is a nice owl. I love that one. Look at these bees, though. Like, look at this. Can I get this in here? I feel like I need to get this closer. Look at the bee's face. Like, whoa, what is going on with the eyes? Some freaky deaky bees. It could be a fairy hive you found, all full of fairy bees. A swarm of these beastly beasts will swoop and sting you as much as they please. Ooh, fairy bees, wow. Oh yeah, because they have like these really long legs with little feet on there. And claws, like hands with claws. It's a very imaginative book. We'll give it that, right? There's a fairy who looks like a twisted oak. He isn't a nice one at all. He'll stick out a gnarly, raggedy root to trip you up and you'll fall. Hey, I think I have found this guy before. That's happened to me. Into a thicket of nettles you'll crash. Or into a bramble patch. Who knows how you'll get out again. And oh, how those brambles will scratch. I'm sort of reading a lot of this. I didn't know I was going to. Oh my gosh, look at these things. Look at the, hold on. <laughs> Can you see that holographic picture? Look at that. There's a fairy who'll push you into the mud. He'll cover your clothes with goo. You'll never be able to wash it off as it sticks like slimy glue. These are fresh, 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 fresh. Oh, here's another cutout over here. So we have, hold on, this book is, this book is pretty long. So I gotta try to get it under my camera here. So you can see we have a cutout here 
which is cool. It almost blends in because this one doesn't have the holograph underneath it, but you can see the cutouts. So this is like a great idea for a journal, having a cutout and you can see through to the next page. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in one of my journals and I'll show you because that's a cool idea, having that little peek through spot. Of course, mine won't have these disgusting maggots underneath. Like, look how gross that is. I promise I won't do that. Let's read what's happening here. Oh, we've got... Oh, look, now it almost looks like this guy's behind bars. So this is pretty nasty. A fairy in black with a broom and a cat may call out your name as you walk and kindly ask you the time of the year, but do not stop to talk. She'll lock you away in a hideous hole. She'll hide you away underground. She'll feed you on maggots and beetles and worms. It could be hours before you're found. This would be a good Halloween book, actually. I should have read this at Halloween. Maybe next year. So yeah, it goes on like that. Maybe I'll read the whole thing for Halloween or maybe a different video I can read the whole thing, but... Look at this one. I'm going to read this too. Don't look in a pool by the light of moon. It's truly a terrible sight. For out of the deep a fairy will creep to give you a horrible fright. He'll reach out and grab you. He'll clutch and he'll claw. He'll gnaw and he'll gnash with his teeth. He might even call you some really bad names as he slides back down underneath. Those little frogs shouldn't hang out with him. He's a bad influence. The frogs are cute. We'll look at the froggies. <laughs> Ooh, look at this Halloween-y sort of scene here. We've got some nice jars. We've got a cauldron. Probably don't want to know what's cooking in that cauldron, though, knowing this book. I like the framing though. This is another idea that would be great for a journal page or an illustration is having your words and then drawing a frame around. It has like mushrooms, maybe not bugs or maybe like a bug that you like, a dragonfly or something. I like slugs. I like that guy. I like snails, grasshoppers, frogs, but that's a good idea too. Oh, I'm going to read you the end now. It says, With so many terrible fairies around, it might seem unsafe to go out. But there's one thing that scary fairies don't like, and that is if you whistle or shout. They cannot stand noise. So if you're afraid, and you think that you're under a charm, just yell or sing out at the top of your voice, and then you will come to no harm. If ever you thought they were scary at all, you will see that it's all just a sham. As soon as you laugh or don't look afraid, you'll see how those fairies all scram. For the truth of it is, and it's plain as your face, more simple than counting to two. The scariest fairies that ever there were are much, much more frightened of you. Oh, I like that. I like how it ended like that, that these fairies are all just not that bad, right? They're actually afraid of you. It's like how a snake will hiss, you know, but they're more afraid of you than you are of them. All right, so that was cute. It was 1997. I might have already said that. So that was Scary Fairies. So that's a cute book. I decided I did like it after I've now gone through it thoroughly. <laughs> All right, and now we have two books here by Brian Froud. This one's Brian Froud and Alan Lee. This one's just Brian Froud, and you are probably familiar with him and his wife from their work on movies like The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. Those were two of my favorite, absolute favorite movies growing up and especially all the creatures, although the Skeksis in the Dark Crystal I didn't love, but, you know, the Gelflings and the Mystics, right? 
they're called the mystics right i'm trying to remember it's been a while since i've seen that one labyrinth we just watched again a couple years ago but it's been a really long time since i've seen the dark crystal anyway i've always wanted these books i finally picked them both up we'll look at this one first this is the 25th anniversary edition of fairies And his illustrations are just so inspiring. All of his characters. And he does the whole range from beautiful fairies and creatures to, like, really hideous creatures. They run the, the whole gambit. I've got some beautiful pencil drawing here. Let me see. This is copyright 1978. And then again in 2002. So this is the 25th anniversary edition that came out in 2002. Let's see if I can, let me zoom out a little bit because this book is bigger. A note on the use of the word fairy, F-A-E-R-I-E. -E. The words fay and fairy come from the French and started to replace the Old English elf during the Tudor period. Spencer and Shakespeare popularized the change. Elfland and Fairyland, elf and fairy, were and are still interchangeable words. In this book, fairy refers to the world of fairy as an entity, as a geographical location, as a general name for its inhabitants, fairy, fairies, and as an adjective to describe its attributes. For example, fairy music. Fairy is applied to a particular diminutive, generally female species of fairy, or when the spelling is common usage, for example, fairy tool, a hill, yellow fairy club, a toadstool, or if used in a source quotation. Fairy is a world of dark enchantments, of captivating beauty, of enormous ugliness, of callous superficiality, of humor, mischief, joy, and inspiration, of terror, laughter, love, and tragedy. It is far richer than fiction would generally lead one to believe. And beyond that, it is a world to enter with extreme caution. For of all things that fairies resent the most... It is curious humans blundering about their private domains like so many ill-mannered tourists. So go softly, where the rewards are enchanting, the dangers are real. And here we go into the world of fairy. And these drawings are things you can just totally get lost in. There's something for everyone. So we have some stories. We have some paintings. This one's The Legend of Knock Grafton. Fairy rings. Uh-oh. Is this guy tripping into a fairy ring here? Fairies often dance in circles in the grass, which are called fairy rings, and this spells danger for the human passerby. The wild enchantment of the fairy music can lead him inexorably towards the ring, which, like a fairy kiss or fairy food and drink, can lead to captivity forever in the world of fairy. If a human steps into the ring, he is compelled to join the fairies in their wild prancing. The dance might seem to last only minutes, or an hour or two, or even at most a whole night. But in fact, the normal duration would be seven years by our time and sometimes longer. Different kinds of creatures here. These are called spriggans. Spriggans are dour and ugly and grotesque in shape. Although quite small, they have the ability to inflate themselves into monstrous forms, which has led humans to believe them to be the ghosts of old giants. Fairy Islands with beautiful watercolor down here.
Ooh, look at this. That's really pretty. The green meadows of enchantment, a land just visible beneath the surface of the sea. So you can see how this would just be fascinating to look at. You could just get lost reading the stories, and even the stories themselves might inspire you to want to create your own version of how these characters look. Fairy tales. And I always love reading fairy tales or the stories of King Arthur. Anything like that is very inspiring. And then you can write your own version of it if you like writing. Or you can illustrate your own characters or the land or an artifact. Anything that you read about. Oh, look at this door in the rock. I love that. That's beautiful. Leprechauns. Watch out for leprechauns. They're always up to mischief, right? <laughs> so this book is not just beautiful fairies, as they told us in the beginning. We get to see all these other little creatures. Never even heard of this one. A clericon? After his days... I don't know what that says. Something the leprechaun enjoys a night's revelry and then becomes known as the Chloricon. Chloricon. Oh, it has the uh, pronunciation there. That's helpful. He raids wine cellars and is known to take wild, drunken rides through the moonlight on the backs of sheep or shepherd's dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. And who's this one? The Fear Durig. Fear Durg. Fear Dirg? I think Fear Dirg delights in practical joking of a rather gruesome nature, and therefore it is probably safer to humor him. Mm, doesn't tell us what. We probably don't want to know. Goblins. See, everybody can draw their own version of a goblin. Try to get that shine off the page for you. And these illustrations, there's just so much. Like, the more you look, the more you might see. Like, a little character hiding back there. They're chock full. There's always all kinds of faces looking. Goblins are a breed of small, swarthy, malicious beings. Although goblin, as a term, is often used as a general name for the uglier inhabitants of fairy. They sometimes appear in the shape of animals, which appropriately reflects their bestial nature. They are the thieves and villains of fairy, companions to the dead, especially on Halloween. Look at all these guys. Ooh, it's a whole pile of goblins there. Look at those expressions, though. I love the expressions. Oh, kobolds. I actually didn't even know this was a real thing. These guys show up in World of Warcraft, <laughs> which is a game that I like to play. Or I did. I haven't played in a while. But these guys are always like, no, take my candle. And I thought they were just made up by Warcraft. But look, there they are. Kobolds, the German version of the Knockers, are not so helpful, for they tend to be generally troublesome and mischievous, frustrating miners in their work and undoing labors. Nevertheless, sometimes they are unexpectedly helpful. The Witchling from Southern Germany. So I love how it goes through tales from all over the world. So we're getting characters from England and Ireland and Germany and probably more, the Welsh. So I like how it's a collection of stories from all over. Pixies. Pixies often take the form of hedgehogs, known in dialect, I think that says dialect, as urchins. See, that's interesting. Pixies often take the form of hedgehogs. So you could draw a little hedgehog pixie of your own design. And all different, like, look, this one has plants growing out. So, I mean, you can just get so much inspiration you could make a whole book of pixies just with plants all different plants will of the wisp 
Bogey, Fuca, an Irish Goblin with a variety of rough beast-like forms. Puck shows up in Shakespeare. Puck is, thanks to Shakespeare, the most famous of the mischievous, shape-shifting hobgoblins. He is closely related to the Welsh... I'm not sure if that says Pika, Puka, and the Irish Fuca. Look at these. There's a Scottish character called the Urisk. And look at this. Beautiful. Looks like a dark fairy. A water fairy. Part seductive woman, part ghost. The Glaistig. She's beautiful. So yeah, if you like fairies or just learning all the different stories, oh my gosh, look at this. This runs the gambit, like we said. You can have some... Oof, this one's terrifying too. Fairy folks are in the wild oaks. So that one's just loaded to the brim. And if that wasn't enough for you, then you can go and find this volume. This is Good Fairies, but ready? If you flip it, you get Bad Fairies. <laughs> so you can read it backwards and upside down, and you can get into some Bad Fairies over here. The Fairies I Draw are a spontaneous manifestation of my relationship with the world. A normally invisible domain is given form, first of all, in my sketchbooks. Fairy faces emerge from the blank white pages as if out of a mist. A few loose random squiggles are drawn, and suddenly a complete personality appears, demanding attention and a name. That's cool. So you can hear the thoughts of the illustrator here, Brian's thoughts of what it's like when he's creating these characters, how they just come to life. And that is how it feels like when you're drawing or even writing, of course, as well. You can write a story about characters and they feel very real, like they just come to life. And again, we've got all kinds of things, fairy blights, danger of death, the dark side of fairy. We have all kinds of fairy glamour, fairy music. So you can learn all about these dark fairies. And then, oh, protection against the fairies. That's very good to know. Bad fairies. Looks like he got arrested. It's like his mugshot. The queen of the bad fairies. She's gorgeous. Look at the coloring. I love the coloring and everything, too. And again, there's always so many little faces everywhere. Every nook and cranny of the page has little faces. The bully bogey. The bigot bogey. Perfidious pook. The Foul Fairy, the Sink Fairy, it lives down the drain. This one's probably not for the kids. They might uh, never turn the sink on again. <laughs> they think that thing's down there. Barka, the Snagger, a Hobya. Oh, look at this little guy, the Gloomiest Doom. A small pang of regret. <laughs> Some of them are more creaturey than than human. So you can look at these beautiful dark fairies and then if it's getting to be a bit much just flip it over and you can look at good fairies. And this book is from 1998. So here we have 
Good fairies. Look, this one's like a dog fairy over here. Doggy fairy. All right, let's see who's on this side. Spring or primrose fairy. That's very beautiful. And look at this one, a helpful hob. This creature helps in the kitchen and especially loves baking bread and buns. Oh, this picture I had found before. I didn't realize it was from this book. I should have known. The fairy godmother. Julia, is that you? Beautiful. What a gorgeous picture. The fairy godmother, or good mother as the Welsh call her, is the fairy who brings her special gifts to the newborn. Godmothers are well-known figures in the fairy tales of many lands where they mitigate curses, point the way through treacherous terrain, and save inexperienced young heroes from danger and from themselves. The moon-wise godmother pictured here brings us sacred gifts from the land of fairy. She holds a golden apple from the magic Isle of Apples, also known as Avalon. This glowing fruit of immortality and fertile creativity radiates the rich, penetrating warmth of the summer sun. She also brings us the apple's complement, a crystal of pure moonlight, to stimulate clear thinking with these gifts of the heart, of sun and moon, of male and female in balance. She asks us to place our lives in balance and to find and fulfill our true purpose. So this would be an excellent picture to have up in your studio. She's going to bring balance and creativity. So that's a very inspiring picture. And again, you could draw your own fairy godmother. So you could read about it and you could draw, or you could just draw the apple, or you could find a picture of an apple and write about the story or a moonstone. You know, you can just kind of take an element from the picture. Now there are a lot of nude fairies in this book. So I'll try to show you the ones that aren't quite so nude. So just know if you get this book, there's going to be nude fairies. So if you don't like that kind of thing, then, you know, just letting you know. <laughs> but they are little spirits of the forest. So they're just feeling free. Beautiful. Look at this beautiful picture. Queen Breed the Bright. Ooh, look at these characters. We have the retriever on the left here. It says, you meant your golf ball to go straight down the middle, yet somehow it veered into unknown terrain. Not to worry, this watchful fairy has it safe in hands. <laughs> we, we all occasionally throw our precious hopes and dreams into the universe, where they seem to disappear without response. The retriever is holding on to them, in what he calls the lost property office of unclaimed wishes. Sometimes our purposes and plans do not follow the course we want them to take, but are held instead in safekeeping until the time for them is right. Trust in the universe and in this fairy who has your best interests at heart, but don't forget your claim ticket or your dreams may be lost forever. I love that. Look at this one. Honesty, the fairy of the soulful eyes. In this fairy's gaze, we see that eyes are truly the mirror of the soul. His eyes reflect our souls and hearts. We can hide nothing from him. The honesty fairy is not a judgmental or accusing creature, but rather is empathetic, but rather is empathic, compassionate, able to see through all our convoluted motivations to the heart of any matter. Summon his help when you need clarity, particularly when your motives are unclear. He teaches us compassion for ourselves and asks that we learn this lesson well. For only when we are honest, clear, and loving to our own spirit can we give these gifts to others. Ooh, look at this one. Angel of Spiritual Empowerment. 
These are gorgeous too. Look at these. Intuition, connection, courage. Those are beautiful. These would be beautiful to draw as well. Drawing like light forms. Healing goddess. Glad fly. A spirit that joyously dances in the moonlight on the surfaces of lakes and ponds. Healing goddess. This lady is the archetype of the great goddess of regeneration and healing. The blue auric forces surrounding her radiate the universal love we came from and will return to. Call upon her for healing of the body, soul, and spirit. The green woman. And a berry man. Seen mostly in the autumn, this fairy watches over the ripening of berries. Call on him for help in bringing projects to conclusion. Ooh, that's a good one, because sometimes, you know, we start things, and we put them aside, and then we go on to the next thing. We might forget to finish it, so you might need to call on the berry man. The weed king. Hmm. <laughs> the king of green men. You could make one of these with some leaves. You could get all your leaves and just have them all spread out, and then just make two eyes and a nose and a mouth. Just make kind of a secret face in there. That would be cool. Wood woman. Oh, that's beautiful. Love that her hair is all the branches. Fox fire fairy. Foxfire is the Irish name for this fairy of the will of the wisp type. The elusive creatures who flicker into and out of vision, famed for leading travelers astray. And Boone, look at this little guy. The fairy companion called Boone protects children from suffering bad dreams. That's very cute. I love that. Little Nell. Look at friendship fairies. Look at this little one. Fairies take particular joy in human children. It is said that when a baby laughs, the fairies dance. Each child has a fairy companion guarding him or her and watching over his or her growth. Some children acknowledge these fairies and speak openly of their invisible friends. But whether or not children are aware of their particular fairies, the fairies remain close by to secretly help them through the difficulties of life. The fairy who was kissed by the pixies gorgeous and I love that big creature at the top here this guy I love him oh here's one of those little hedgehog pixies oh and there's a little like cat kind of creature over here so that's the good fairy bad fairy book and as I was closing it I came upon this I just had to show you. I thought this was funny this is the buttered toast fairy who decides which side of a piece of buttered toast ends up face down when it is dropped. <laughs> the fate of your toast is in the hands or claws of the buttered toast fairy. So that's funny. So these books are great. You can just see how much inspiration that they can give. And I hope you enjoyed looking at these stories with me. Uh, I had more to share, but I know I've been going on for a while now. So I'm going to end there with these. And I hope that maybe some of these pictures or stories might inspire you to go off and create something or fuel your imagination. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. And if you happen to spot any fairies this week, let me know. And if you drop your toast, you know who is deciding which way it lands. <laughs>